the other day I got a comment on one of my videos, the Funky Drummer Does It Again one. Uh, the comment was made by Gav Drums here on YouTube and it reads, your time is impeccable. Any tips for practicing slow tempos? I try, but I tend to lose concentration. First of all, thank you a lot for those kind words. Secondly, I am gonna break this question up into two pieces. Piece number one, Tips for practicing slow tempos, getting feel and timing right. And piece number two, keeping the concentration throughout a musical piece or practice. Let's try with that first part where we're practicing slower tempos, getting the feeling timing, musical timing still correct. The most important of playing a slower song is that you feel the subdivisions. The video where this was commented on, uh, Tamaki Drummer does it again has a soundtrack in the background. Jazz hip hop, drumless funk, 82 BPM. You will find it in the description down below. And it's not a terribly slow song, 82 BPM, but it's still slow enough for if you aren't familiar with playing slow music, it can really be hard to keep that uh, subdivision going and keeping yourself in the music and not rushing and not slowing down. What we wanna try to do first is decide our subdivisions. So if we take a little bit of a listen to the song, it sounds like this. And if we try to count with it directly here, just in the regular old quarter notes, it'll go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Um, one, two and then we can try that's the basic just to count along with the music let's try and subdivide that with eight notes and then we would count like this one and two and three and four and 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 already down there when we have gone down from the quarter notes to the eighth notes we have enough of a subdivision to play on to actually get the feel of the song. Let's try it out. every single eighth note start with your right hand just try and play them and when you're ready feel free to add the kick drum or the snare and just try to keep them on the eighth notes nothing in between just plain clean eighth notes that's plenty of room to groove right there but you can of course subdivide even more so from eighth notes but it loses some of that heavy feel that the track has in its beginning. We still get the heavy feel from the eighth notes. That's where the heavy feel lies. When we add the 16th, we get a more rigid, a very different feel that's not as heavy. But the trick here is to have the eighth notes as we wanna use the heaviness of the eighth notes while we try and use the 16th notes as a kind of guideline of are we still in time? So we want to add some 16th notes uh, in some places and we want to exclude them from other places to get a 8th note bass with 16th note sprinkle on top of it, if that makes any sense. Let me try to give you an example. Three, um. So to summarize, we want to have the eighth notes that are 
very, very present in the song, and it's the groove. Uh, but we still want to have this chugga 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 of the 16th notes in the back of our heads. You want to keep it in the back of your mind. That's the basic uh, idea with subdivisions and groove and how you want to work with the subdivisions and not against them. The second piece of the comment that I wanted to touch a bit on now is keeping the concentration throughout a musical piece or a musical practice or in general actually. When I first started studying to play drums professionally, I was at a school and I played the drums almost seven days a week uh, for two years straight. And I did not have the mental capacity to always be in the moment when playing the drums. And honestly, I didn't even try to be there because I didn't realize how important it was. It wasn't until after one of my concerts, which was, you know, okay. And one of my teachers said, if there's one thing you owe the audience, you don't owe the audience anything. You don't have to play chopsy, you don't have to groove, you don't have to do anything. But there's one thing you have to do, and there's one thing you owe them, and it's to be present. You have to be on the stage, and you have to be there in front of the audience and really know that you're there. You can't think about anything else. You have to be there and be present. I really took those words to heart because I, when he said those words, I realized I during our last concert, which was so-so, I hadn't been there at all whatsoever. I have been somewhere else entirely. And so those few words, to be present in the moment, really changed things about how I think about music. And for me, one of the most useful things about being present and how to be present is to narrow your mind and what you're thinking about down to a point. If any of you have done yoga uh, and a bit of mindfulness maybe, you might recognize uh, that if when you're in your standing upward facing dog or whatever, you are, you are often instructed to think about a specific part of your body. And what is this specific part doing? Uh, what is your back doing? Are your shoulders tense? What is your face doing? Are you open wild mouth being uh, just relaxed or are you tense in your face? You are forced to think about things that your body is doing unintentionally. And that's where we want to put our attention when we're playing drums. So when we are in a practice room, what I did, and I recommend you did, I was at a jazz school, so of course the swing was of great importance, and I sat down behind the drum set playing the most basic of swing comps, which is this. Nothing flashy. I even also went like this, just eighth notes, uh, quarter notes, my bad. Because if I can keep the concentration on this and do this and still be present in the music, I can easily be present in the music on a concert. So what you do, this is the tutorial. When you strike the cymbal, look at specific parts of your hand. Look at your fingers, look at the pinky finger, the ring finger, index, uh, ling, middle finger, index finger, tummy, th thumb, thumb. Just, and look at them and see what they are doing. Not just see what they're doing, look at them, feel how does the fingers feel? How does everything, you know, yeah, what is it doing? What is happening in your hand as you're playing this very simple beat? Go faster beats, slower beats, but keep it simple. Don't, you can go faster, but don't go, you know, rushing away with the double time swing. And, no, 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 that's not the point of this exercise. The exercise is to stay in the moment. What is your limbs doing? So you go through the fingers, then you can look at the hand as a whole. What is the hand doing when I'm striking the cymbal? Where am I striking the cymbal? Where does it, does it sound different? Just focus on the little, little tiny things. When you, th when you thought about everything, you look at the clock and you realized it's been 45 minutes. 
It's insane how fast the time goes and you've been present all of this time because you've been focusing on the small tiny details. When you're done with one arm, I would suggest taking a break, walking up, stretching a bit, taking a walk outside maybe, walk around the building, come back to the drum set. Then do the same thing with the foot. What is the foot action doing when it's lifting and putting down this hi-hat? What is happening in your leg? How is the sound? How do I get, can I get a different sound? Where are my foot, is my foot placed on the freaking pedal? All the tiny new details is look at them, focus on them, really focus and think about if I do a little tiny thing differently, what happens? This is how time flies and this is where you get, for me at least, in the zone. And this is key to being able to be present and don't lose concentration. The thing about this as well, when you practice with other musicians or at trainings or live, of course, the focus that you put on yourself and the minute details of the right arm and the left arm and the legs and your body, where's your butt, you know, all of those details, you shouldn't think about them while training with others. Instead, that concentration, when you feel your mind wander, you focus on an instrument, say, for example, which is a very good one, the bass. Look at the bassist, look at his fingers, look at the, the, his right hand. When exactly does this person play the notes? Can I be exactly with him swinging? This is of course swinging, but it goes for every single genre. You wanna play with the band. What is he doing? What scales are he playing? Is he playing very dissonant heavy? And should I reflect that with playing something rough around the edges? Or is he playing something very melodic and I should be, ah, okay, I'm gonna play with him and do that as well. Focus extremely much on him. If you're doing that and your mind wanders, change the person you're thinking about. So stop thinking about bassist, look at the pianist or the singer or whatever, the guitarist. Just place your focus on something. That's the important thing here. Your mind wanders, you have to focus your concentration. Thank you, Gav Drums, a lot for your comment. Uh, I really appreciate it. If anyone has any other suggestions or weird topics I can talk about during drums, have any questions maybe, drop them down here in the comment section down below. Uh, if you have anything, you thought about anything that you didn't like about what I said in this video, leave a dislike and leave a comment of why, what, what, what I said that was wrong or that you don't agree with and I'll happily uh, talk about it either, either in the next video or I'll comment on your comments. Anyway, uh, I hope you have a wonderful day, night, evening, whatever you are having, and I'll see you in the next one.